it's uh, Thursday, August 10th, and you may have noticed that it's raining. <laughs> it's pouring. Took me light, sorry. It's um it's August tenth. It's 8 o'clock in the evening. It's 8.13, or no, let's see, it's 8. Our clock in the car is always set fast because Karin <laughs> fools herself. <laughs> she fools herself into thinking it's later than it is so she doesn't miss her, miss her train in the morning. Whatever works. Yeah. And uh, made a completely unnecessary trip here into Oxfeld today. Hope you can hear me over the over the rain. I uh, forgot to turn in the slip for empty bottles. We had so many empty bottles that I brought them back. And they were worth twenty dollars. So uh, when I got home, I realized I had forgotten to turn the slip in. And I, some places you have to turn it in the same day that you get it. As it turns out, that was not necessary. That it was not here, and it wasn't necessary to come back. But at least this way, I get out a cooking dinner. <laughs> I started. I got all the vegetables cut and fried the meat up. To make a to make a toma tomato sauce, uh, but I left it with Karin then to finish, and um, I thought I'd tell you a little bit of a story, or not a story really, but a couple of people have asked me recently how I learned German. And this last weekend, I spent with a group of friends couple of Germans and some friends from Holland and others from Italy and I realized while I was there we spoke English the whole time that I uh, was having considerable difficulty expressing myself in English about more while well, we were talking about art and music and things like that and things that I don't normally speak about in English and I must say I had quite a, uh, not a difficulty really, but I noticed that it was, uh, that I was out of practice and it's not much wonder because I hardly get any chance to speak English, except when I'm speaking with you guys. Anyway, I came to Germany in 1965, September of 1965, with my friend Jim. And neither one of us spoke any any German at all. We had taken German in college, but we didn't learn anything. The college courses were very strange, really, because we read books that were much too difficult. And uh, they were so difficult, in fact, that all you could really do to read them was sit with a dictionary and look every word up. I've read them in the meantime, and I wonder now how in the world they expected us ever to be able to read them. One of them was called Dry Kameraden, uh, Three Comrades. I don't know what it's really called in English. Uh, I think they made a movie out of it. And um, by Eric Remark. 
Uh, and in any case, I didn't. We didn't learn anything. That's that's the, that's all I want to say about that. So when we came to Germany, it was interesting. Many people spoke enough English that we could get along, but we bought an old Fiat that um, was breaking down all the time. And as it turns out, unsurprisingly, automobile mechanics didn't necessarily speak English. So we were kind of stuck and as a consequence, I learned for words like head gasket and carburetor and uh, rocker arm in German before I knew how to say hello. I then took a course at the Goethe Institute, which is an institute for non-German speakers to learn German. Uh, we did an awful lot of really wonderful beer drinking. I think uh, I probably could have gotten an advanced degree in beer drinking, but uh, I didn't learn much German. I did learn to say hello. I learned some very basic words, but then I was stuck. Jim went back to the States and I was stuck over here alone. I got a job in a factory and um, so I bought a an encyclopedia and I memorized it. It's an encyclopedia of about 600 pages and every word in it that I thought would ever be useful I memorized. And I would practice at night. remembering words, looking at the pictures in the, just glancing at the picture and then remembering, trying to remember all the words that were related with the picture. So I got a pretty, I developed a pretty quick vocabulary. No, I have to say that again. I developed a rather large vocabulary in a short time. And, uh, however, of course, with words like angle iron and uh, was another word that I learned iron steel barrel and things like that words like that you can't really converse with anyone I did learn a lot of words though and that was important because then later on, about in my second year here, I met a young woman who I found very attractive and who I enjoyed talking to very much, and she wanted to learn to speak English. So uh, she would speak to me in English and I would speak to her in German, and we corrected each other. And that's that probably taught me the most about how to, how to speak or about speaking German. I, after three years in Germany, I was expected to lecture, to give lectures in German, which I did. And I had to memorize them, basically, because uh, obviously the, the sentence structure and so on was important. And so I wrote them down and I memorized them pretty much. And then I thought I was going to have to write my thesis in German. However, as it turned out, the work I had done, my my PhD work, was of enough was it was of enough scientific interest <clears throat> that it was clear that I would publish it, and it didn't make any sense publishing it in German. So I was allowed to publish it in English, 
and turn in my thesis to the university in Tübingen, where I studied. In, in English, and it turned out that at the university there you can turn your thesis in in German, English, or Latin. Well, uh, I wasn't up on Latin, so, and it would have been possible for me to write it in German, and I probably would have learned to write German a lot better if I had, but I didn't. I wrote it in English. It was published. The paper was published in an international journal. And I, like I say, it was in English. <clears throat> but basically, that's how I learned to speak German. Uh, I, I spoke a lot with people. I had to in the lab. At the, in the first couple of years, I had a little chance to speak German because most of the other people in the lab weren't Germans. They were Italian or French or uh, Japanese. And so we all spoke English. But um, then as time went on, I was, I worked more with Germans and spoke German in the lab. And I would say after five years, I was fluent, probably had a larger vocabulary than many Germans had or have simply because I was interested in many things and I had memor memorized an encyclopedia. <laughs> when I think back on it, it's kind of funny. I still have the encyclopedia. I still look at it sometimes and laugh. I remember words that I had trouble learning at the time. Anyway, that's how I learned German. Now I'm married to a, well, now I've been married to a German for uh, 15, 16, 17 years, and um, as I said, I don't get a whole lot of chance to speak English. However, I'm convinced that one does not lose one's, one's mother tongue, and my mother tongue is English. And I'm comfortable speaking uh, in both languages. I can't say I'm more comfortable in English uh, anymore. Someone asked me if I dream in German. Yes, I dream in German and English, according to the situation. I'll stop the narrative here now and uh, just make a couple of comments. Uh, can you learn German? Well, yes, of course you can. Uh, you can learn any language if you need it. I don't believe you can learn a language, most, most of us. There are certainly very talented people who uh, can learn languages as a hobby, but most generally, if you don't need it, you're not going to learn it. Uh, you can't just go two, two times a week to an evening school and learn a language very well. You're going to need to uh, be able to use it and and have a reason to need to use it, either to earn money or um, <laughs> to meet someone of the opposite sex or get to know them better. Um, it's hard work, it takes time, and uh, if you, you do need a lot of patience. <clears throat> so there you are. In the meantime, I'm a translator. I translate technical, medical, and scientific texts, and just a evidence that it is possible to learn, <laughs> to learn a foreign language after 50 years or 55 years. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and uh, listening to my babble, and be with you again soon. Bye.